mental health has been a topic of much social discourse over the past few years. Yet many people don't even know what it is or what it is even about. Hello everybody. Welcome to yet another episode of the Game Changers Podcast. My name is Quinn Sejis and it's a pleasure to be here with you. My guest today is a young man who has a passion for all things mental health. His goal is to teach people how to overcome their mental health issues and to become better all-around individuals. His name is Janil Lima and it's my privilege to introduce him to you. I know you've been away for some while now and I'm so happy to finally be back with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Happy listening. Hello RJ, how are you doing? I'm good man, I'm good Quinn, how are you doing buddy? I'm doing great man. You know, I mean, when I send this video out, you, I will have your name as Janiel Lima. But most people know you as yeah. RJ. T- tell, before we go into any details, tell us what your real first name is. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, to um, end the decade-long controversy of how my first name is pronounced, my name is Janiel Lima. My first name okay. is a French pronunciation, so it's actually Jean-Neil. All right, great. So Jean-Neil Lima. I will stick to RJ. <laughs> but um, no problem. It is good to know. All right, so bro, tell the people a little bit about yourself. I know you, but my guests will not. Well, my viewers will not know who you are. Sure, sure. Tell the people no a little problem. bit about yourself. No, no problem. No problem. Well, as previously mentioned, my name is Joni Lima. I am from the beautiful island of St. Lucia. Um, at the age of 12, I would have migrated to St. Croix, whereby I would have gone to high school, then attend the University of the Southern Caribbean, where I would have done my bachelor's degree in theology. And after I was done, I, um, well, I applied for a master's in psychology where I am currently studying at the Liverpool John Moores University. Uh, because of COVID, it was done online. So I'm just pursuing this master's online at the moment. Got, got you. So what do you do for a living though? Do you work while you're at school or is this school full time? Yes, um, at, the, at this current um, recording, I am a private contractor or an independent contractor for a private company in Trinidad. So that is my source of income as well as attend, to, attend school. Okay, great. Nice. I love to hear that. Now, I know that you study in psychology. First of all, how do you get into this field? To be very honest, um, my my first love and first, I would say, desire was to study theology. And while studying theology, I grew an interest in understanding how the mind works. Now, for okay. those who may not know, theology is in it basically is the study of God, right? And psychology is basically study of the mind. Now. While attending USC, I would have had some classes, you know, intro to psych and stuff like that. And it basically gave me a taste of what psychology is. And after completing that class, I believe I got an A in that class, if not an A, but a high grade. And after completing, I realized that it's something I would be interested in studying a little further. And... When I was done with my, my bachelor's, I always said no time. Matter of fact, before I finished my bachelor's, I sent out applications to schools. And of course, the requirement to do a master's in some universities, you have to have a bachelor's degree 
in uh, the in some sort of field of study. So the university I got accepted to was accepting me on the basis that I would have brought in my my transcript, my bachelor's, and you know the various right. documentation. And after which I got accepted, I had to sit an English exam, a start, and stuff like that. And while studying is when I realized that hey, this is something that I really, really, really enjoy. So it's it's honestly a joy to study. I don't feel like I'm studying. I feel like I'm just learning something that I always had a desire to learn. So it don't feel like school for me, honestly. It don't feel like school. Nice. I love yeah. that. And, you know, I think the combination between theology and psychology is a great combination. Because, you know, people mm. always think that theology is just about becoming a pastor or a minister. But your understanding of spiritual things and your understanding of the mind works Correct. goes well together. Correct. And it, it will help you become a better professional in your field. Would you agree with that? Very much so. Very much so. Lovely. All right. So one of the main reasons I brought you on here is to talk about mental health. Now, first of all, explain to us what mental health is and why is it so important? Right. So in short, mental health is like the physical and the spiritual health. It's basically a nurturing, a grooming and an exercising of our mental faculties and making sure that a human being, I would say a human being, is in the optimum where the mental capacity is. So, for example, if somebody is going to work and where they work is causing them a lot of stress and it's causing a lot of negative, I would say negative feelings towards them and they will feel bombarded it would start to take a toll on them and eventually that that toll then would start to go into the the emotional life and it will start to affect people around them and it will go into their love life it will go into their family life and it's just a matter of finding where the problem is and then coming up with a solution whereby we can work together to help somebody where their mind is concerned, or by extension, their mental health. Nice. I like that. So tell me how exactly we protect and take care of our mental health. Not a problem. I'm happy you are. Now, again, as the physical health and spiritual health, emotional health, everything, it's all about exercise. It's all about uh, balance. It's all about doing everything in a certain level of moderation. Now, there are times whereby we will be placed in situations where it would be a little difficult to protect that aspect. For example, if someone is in a, a service, for example, like a military service, they would be going under a lot of stress tests and it would be a little difficult for them to seek professional help. Now, in everyday transactions, it's easy for someone to actually just go on the internet and figure out what may be going on wrong with them. But I wouldn't advise self-diagnosing, right? I would right. advise going to a mental health professional. So my first, my first line of defense is if you are feeling a certain way, for example, if you may be feeling sad for a prolonged period of time, I'd advise you to just check up on a mental health professional. If mm -hmm. you are grieving, I would advise you to check up on a mental health professional. Or if you are going to a, a level of loss, it doesn't have to be death. It could be a breakup or mm -hmm. just some sort of discomfort in your life whereby you think that you don't have the willpower to continue or actually you, you see no reason for living. Our advice is right. a mental professional. That's great advice. That's great advice. So find the help that you need. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Okay, so we're speaking about mental health, and I know that you have a podcast named The Mindset Podcast. It's a podcast that you recently launched. First of all, I want to say I'm proud of you for launching your podcast. You know, I, in the background, we were, you know, talking, and I'm so proud that you have taken the initiative to start a podcast. 
You know, from, from the time when we were in school together, I've always seen that your voice sounds like that radio voice. So it's perfect for podcasting. So I'm very happy that you have started and decided to go down that path. So tell me, Ajay, what is your podcast really about and why did you start it? Sure, not a problem. I'd be happy to. Well, first of all, my podcast is the Mindset Podcast. And as the name suggests, it's, it focuses on mm -hmm. the mindset, uh, mental health. And just a little bit about it. Anything that we go through, as in sadness, happiness, any emotion that mm -hmm. we express, it's basically our body reacting to a certain situation or okay. a certain event, right? And I always say our mind is, well, our mindset actually is our greatest oppressor and our greatest contributor or some something that contributes to our happiness. For example, if you are placed in a situation whereby it may be difficult for you to overcome, for example, it's your first time driving and you have this mindset that, you know, I cannot do this. Automatically, you will start to, your body would start to then react to anytime you go to drive, then you would have mm -hmm. some sort of fear, right? It's almost like you put in a block before it happened. As opposed to saying, well, hey, you know, it's my first time driving or I've never driven before, but I can try it out, right? I could try it out. And if it's not something I enjoy doing, then I can find alternatives whereby I could get somebody to help me or just look at driving videos whereby I right. can learn in a more comfortable environment. So it's all about how we perceive things. And the podcast also focuses on how these things affect our mental health. And it's basically a platform where I provide educational information to everyday situations, right? So right now, I would be focusing on, you know, just mm -hmm. everyday emotions, depression, anxiety, stuff like that, and use it as a means of bringing to light some of the, the stigmas and try to make mental health something that it's okay to speak of, you know, like how we speak mm -hmm. of physical health, how we speak of emotional health, how we speak of spiritual health. The, I want the platform to be a place where persons can come and feel comfortable listening. I, no prejudice, no bias. It's just straight facts, scientific evidence. Everything is backed by evidence. It's mm -hmm. not a he say, she say. And it's just a matter of letting people understand what mental health is and basically steps that they can use, everyday steps can, they, that they can use to help them feel better. Right, but not not taking away from the fact that you need if situations be to find a, a mental health professional. So it's not taking away that fact. It's just a means of just highlighting mental health issues in our society. Beautiful. I love that. And you know, things like this is, are so important, you know. Like these type of conversations, these type of platforms provide that outlet that people need. And, you know, oftentimes we see ourselves or we find ourselves running away from these type of conversations, especially us as men. Definitely. Why do you think men mm. run away from these conversations? Right. Well, to be very honest, we learn mm -hmm. through many avenues, right? But the one I'm going to focus on is by learning, learning through social okay. interactions, right? And there's a theory in psychology to that, is the social learning theory whereby we learn from mm -hmm. society by what we see, what we see others do, and stuff like that. And I'm saying this just to bring the point across. We men, well, men are more skeptical to speak about mental health for many reasons, right? One of the many reasons is that Social media portrays men to be strong, you know, emotionless. You just have to be a warrior. You have to be a tiger. You have to be a fighter, which is not bad, right? But as I previously said, everything should be done in balance and moderation. So it's 
it's more sh- it's shunned upon for a man to express how he feels because you know it would be labeled mm-hmm. as being weak and as much as we may want to open up it's a little it, it takes away from a, a man you know it takes away from our pride because we feel like i don't need to help and what is it <laughs> you guys to cry no nah. so it's it's a lot it's a lot of the external factors that influence what we learn and sometimes it could be from the home that we grew up in so if we saw that our dad was not one who expressed mm-hmm. his emotions i mean it would be a little difficult for us then to want to be willing to express our emotion and when we go to school we see that most of the role models that are males they don't really go to the counselor you don't see right. men going to counselors you see women go to counselors so it's it's a lot it's a lot whereby society and the media have a lot to to play where the mental health of a man is concerned which is very dangerous hmm. interesting very, very dangerous yeah Hey Game Changers, you know podcasting is such a unique platform to help connect with such amazing people from all over the world and you know build an amazing audience. But I know many of you are really wondering how do I get started? How do I get my episodes and my story out on all major streaming platforms? Well, I'm glad you asked. Buzzsprout is the answer to all your podcasting problems. We use Buzzsprout as a distribution hub and we couldn't help share it with you. If you click the link in the description, you can get started today. Even better, because you're my friend, if you sign up via my link, you'll get $20 worth of credit so you can use as you please. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description down below to get started today. Hello everybody. I hope you're enjoying the episode. This episode was made possible through a platform called Riverside FM. It's a platform that I've grown to love and it really does justice to creators. Unlike Zoom or other platforms, it records content locally and then uploads it to the cloud so you have a seamless video. If you are a creator and looking to get into this space, this is the platform for you. Click the link down below. to get started today. So, how do we remedy that? How do we get men to have these conversations? Well, Quinn, I'm happy you asked that question uh, because in order to solve a problem, a first the first thing we have to do is realize there is a problem, right? And if somebody is not willing to accept that there is a problem, then I mean, what can you help them to solve? So one of the ways that I could always recommend is by bringing forth educational platforms where men can understand that. expressing emotions in a respectable mm-hmm. manner in a way that it's i wouldn't say mm-hmm. just outburst it's a matter of expressing it and doing it in a way that others can see and be like you know what this is not right. hard to do you understand so if if we can make it a norm for men to you know speak up and express how they feel it could be a means of counseling services whereby a, let's just say a psychological service um could be offered to men and say for example a company can team up with a psychological company and um, mm-hmm. service business and they can offer the service for free anonymously and men can just go and just you know be heard or the influencers in in society can show that they are an example and that they themselves seek help from professionals 
So when we then see that they are seeking help, then by extension, we That's are true. seeking help. Because I'm sure if we have a role model, let's just say a basketballer that we, mm-hmm. we enjoy see playing, and then he posts up a, a, a status, it may be on Instagram, it may be on Facebook, of him in a, a counselor's office. I'm sure it would show you a different side of that basketballer, whereby you can see a human side of him. You understand? Because when he's off the court, he then have to deal with the pressures that come nice. being famous. You understand? And most of the people who are famous actually have counselors. But they won't show it because, again, social media would portray mm-hmm. what they want the masses right. to do. So if we can see that our influencers are seeking the professional help, it would help where that is concerned. And every problem, every every part of society starts from a family. So if we start with the family, we can help go down the road whereby we can start a good trend and by extension society. Because when we leave our homes and we go to social gatherings, for example, it may be church, it may be school, it may be to work, we can then you know, share with our peers, you know, I've been seeing this counselor, I've been seeing this mental health professional, and they are advising me how to go through this and how to go through that. And it's bringing some sort of comfort and some sort of help whereby I am feeling comfortable to share it with you. And it's nothing demasculating for a man to mm-hmm. say, hey, this, I need help. So we have to break down stigmas where men have to feel like it's all about being tough. You understand? It's, it's nothing wrong with seeking help. Love that. that. That's a great message. You know, I, I hope the men who are listening will take that advice that from both of us, you know, two men, we are not afraid to talk about these things because the rate of suicide amongst men is ridiculous and we need to do something about that. And the only way we can help that, the only way we can remedy these, these things is by having conversations like these. So I love Correct. that Correct. insight that you give. Okay, RJ. So I'm moving into... My personal favorite segment of a Game Changers interview. It's called the Quick Hitters. Now, I know that you are a fan of the show. So I know you know what Quick Hitters are. But for my audience, yes, who man. don't know, <laughs> yeah, Quick man. Hitters ready. Ready. are rapid fire question. Right? So I'm going to ask RJ ready. three questions. And he must answer them as quickly as he can. With the first answer that comes to his head. So are you ready, RJ? Mm-hmm. Let's go. I'm ready, man. So the first question is, what music do you like to listen to? Reggae. I love gospel, but reggae. Question number two. What's the worst advice you've ever gotten? I don't know if you might have a chance for this, but be promiscuous. Oh, that's terrible advice. <laughs> for sure. That is terrible advice. <laughs> Number three, what's the best advice you've ever gotten? Give your life to Christ. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Right? And that was a quick eaters. I think you've probably answered my quick eaters question the fastest mm-hmm. ever. So, you know, yeah, I love yeah. it. We played. We that's played that's what quick together. eaters it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be rapid fire. So great job, man. I like that. Yeah. Thank okay, you. sir. So we're moving on to the back end of the interview. We've had a great time so far. In an age where social media, like you mentioned earlier on, seems to be bombarding us, what are some realistic ways we can decompress and focus on developing our mental health? Not a problem. Good question. Well, I would take it, I would knock the first part first, um, mm-hmm. how to decompress. I have some solutions whereby mm-hmm. others can use. First one is to set healthy boundaries, right? And these boundaries could include, but not limited to, setting time for social media. 
right? We all have 24 mm-hmm. hours in a day, right? And if, I mean, some phones, uh, for example, the iPhone would tell you your screen time and you can see where you spend most of your time. Most of the stuff that you consume would be regurgitated in your daily living. So if you consume a lot of funny videos mm-hmm. or educational videos, then you get to implement it when you go out in society. So set healthy boundaries. If when you go, you get up, you say, well, from 12 to 1, I would just take time to just be away from my phone. You can put a, a notification blocker or you can just put your phone in some mode where it might be mm-hmm. in airplane mode. It could be in sleep. It could be in do not disturb where you just take that time for you. Right. So the first step is to set healthy boundaries where social mm-hmm. media is concerned. If you know you spend most, a lot of time on Facebook, see how much time in the day you spend on Facebook and is that time productive? Right. When I mean productive, I don't mean like scrolling through right. and laughing. I mean, like, mm-hmm. what are you learning from that, um, from the post and stuff like that? If you enjoy Instagram, if you enjoy TikTok, what, what is coming up? more frequently what is the algorithm mm. feeding you right uh, when you realize what it's feeding you ask yourself the question am i utilizing my day productively or is it just used in amusement right and after you have answered that then you can learn how to do the second one the second one is spending time outside right so it may be reading it may be going for a hike it may be going for a small walk and I know some people might have rivers next to them. So you just go out. You don't have to go out with others. You can go by yourself. Just make sure it's at a safe time whereby others can know, well, he went there or he went here. And you can be accounted for in the event you spend a little longer. So if you have to go by the beach, just just to stretch your legs. I mean, as far as I know, to go by the beach is free. Yes, you have to go with a vehicle or whatnot, but... The, the scenery is yes so you can one set healthy boundaries two get out more and three this one is a subjective point so if you are someone who enjoys socializing then you can just go to somewhere that you and some friends could agree on you'll go out for a little a little date it doesn't have to be anything romantic it could be you guys go to catch up on some ice cream. You could go and just catch up on some, you know, just some time that was not spent and just enjoy it Lovely. with company. Because social gatherings and social encouragement can actually help one help one's mental health. So some people might actually isolate themselves and think that it's the best way to go. But it's actually terrible. Yes. So these are my three steps that I can actually recommend to help others decompress and with that being implemented you can just basically navigate where you want your life to go and the second part of the question the first part is decompressing and the second part is just the second part is well how can we step back so you answered both of them right so all right no problem well i would recommend this these three points highly honestly highly beautiful I love that man. And and that is great advice, not just for social media, but that's great advice, period. You know, we all have stressful lives. Life is stressful in general. And we all need some time to relax and find time to enjoy the simpler things in life. And the advice that you've just given is advice that anybody can use. Anybody can take and apply to their lives. And it will definitely impact their lives. So I love that. Thank you for that. All right, sir. So we're on to our last two questions. The one before the last. No problem. How can people get in contact with you? That's a good question. Um, To be very honest, I leave what I preach. Um, I'm not really on social media very much. Like, honestly, I try to stay away from social media. But um, if someone wants to get in contact with me, I am on Facebook. My name is mm-hmm. Johnny Lima. It's going to get in contact with me. My name is Johnny Lima. And it's J-E-A-N, 
with a dash or hyphen N E A L L I M A on Instagram. My name is R J, right? But it's A underscore R underscore J <laughs> underscore A underscore Y underscore right. underscore, right? So you can get me on Instagram, Facebook, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, most of my other social media accounts, I don't really use them. Like, okay, good. Like I will leave the links to all your social media down below. Shout out your podcast as well. You know, tell us where we can get your podcast. Sure. You can get my podcast mm -hmm. on Apple Podcasts at The Mindset Podcast. And you can also get it on the Google Podcast as well as Spotify. Now, the Spotify and the Apple Podcast are my main platforms, uh, mainly because I understand the analytics and most of the viewings are actually right. on Spotify and Apple Podcast. So you can reach the, you can get a podcast at, again, the Mindset Podcast on Apple and Spotify. Now, I know I, I said I have one more question, but I actually have two more. You made me think of something. No problem. What is next for you? Right. All right, so that's a good question. Um, I'm finishing up my master's, should be by the grace of the Lord mm -hmm. at the end of this one. And after that, I have to get some sort of hours in whereby I can get my license and stuff like that. Or I could go and mm -hmm. complete a doctorate. However, I am going to be taking a academic fast. <laughs> right. I've been studying for god knows how long but um when it comes to psychology i don't feel like i'm studying but i realize that i have to be realistic because i still have to put in some study hours i still have to put in some research hours and i just need some time to just feel what it just just reminisce and go back to the feeling of not being able to submit an assignment or you know the 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 feeling of a due date, you know, I just, I just want to, I just want to be free. So I would just take an academic fast, could be for a year or so, and then go back. But um, my ultimate goal is to be a psychologist by definition. And what that means is someone who has a PhD in psychology. Nice. And we look forward to that. You know, I always pitch my guests. I say, when you smash that goal that you are aiming for, come back. Come back to Game Changers. And let's talk about the journey. Right? Definitely. Definitely. Absolutely. I I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy that you're becoming what you've set yourself out to become. And I pray all God's blessings on you. My final question to you. Thank you. I do like that. Before we close, give a word of advice to a young person who is looking at this. One word of advice I would give to a young person is find a positive mentor who you look up to, whereby they can bring some sort of guidance to your life. You don't have all the answers to the questions you're asking, and you just need somebody to help you along life's journey. But make sure when you're seeking someone, you ask God to guide you that you may get the right person and he would lead you where he wants you to go. That's, that's perfect advice. That's small advice, but it's so powerful. So power-packed. Thank you so much for that, bro. Thank you in general for coming on. You are a fantastic guest. I knew you would have been a fantastic pleasure. guest, brother. It was a pleasure. You know, just knowing you, and I love the insight that you've, you've given. I like the way that you're growing. You know, I like, I always like to see my friends do big things. And you're doing massive things. Definitely, bro. And I look forward to even bigger things from you. Appreciate it. Maybe sometime I might come on the Mindset Podcast. And we can have that collaboration on that Definitely. end. Definitely, for sure. Right? 
So indeed. we're gonna look forward indeed. to it. Indeed. And I wish you all the best going forward. Yes, sir. Okay, guys. This has been yet another episode of the Game Changers podcast. Thank you so very much for listening. Now, I know we had a little hiatus, but I promise to be even more consistent. I know you guys are looking forward and looking out for episodes like this. So, be there with me. Do me a favor, like and subscribe. The more you like and subscribe, the more energy it gives me to create content for you guys. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for listening. Remember to download the episodes. Download the episodes on Spotify. Download it on Apple Podcasts. Da- download it across platforms. So you can listen whenever you want. Whenever you're available. And as always, stay hungry. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.